Welcome back to another video on YAGSL, and this is going to be part 3. It's not part 3, part 4. This is going to be right after our simulation video, and we're going to start by teaching you how to use how to use Path Planner with YGSL to program your autonomous. So let's get started. First things first is, if you haven't already, download Path Planner. You're going to go to, to Path Planner Docs. And we're going to click on this GitHub page right here. And you're going to go down here to releases. But be careful because it is going to... Uh, actually, no. If it sends you to the 2024 one, make sure you click on like releases up top here and you'll find the beta. Or, yeah. The beta, whatever is the most recent one for 2025, download that. And then it should appear in here or in your downloads. You got to unzip it. And when you unzip it and click on the folder, you're going to click on this application folder, right? So this is after you unzip it. And it should bring you to this page after some screens. And that's how you download Path Planner. And there you have some example paths here. But we're going to go back to our program because we need to set up Path Planner in our program. So let's go to our Swerve subsystem. And what we're going to do is some dark voodoo magic called copy pasting code. So we're going to go to our... If you for, this is our example docs from, if you've forgotten already, right here. Go to this link in our docs.ygsl.com inside code setup is going to be get um, the get help link to uh, the YGXL example program. We're going to go to Swarp subsystem, subsystem right here. Click on this. Scroll down. And we are going to go control F set up path planner right here and scroll down and we need to find the constructor for this here so line 157 it sets up an auto builder okay all right now scroll down till this ends that catches the exception and oh yeah that should be it. Okay, so it's from w line 170 all the way down to 234. We're going to copy paste all of that. Go back to our program. Go to sort of system, subsystem all the way to the bottom of all these methods that we created in like the second video. And then paste. First thing you're going to notice is that it's angry at us. It's going to be angry at this. L quite literally. <laughs> And we're going to change all of this to Swerve's Drive, right? So before it was like referencing uh, something else, but we don't have that. So what we say, we're just going to tell it to go reference uh, Swerve Drive instead to get the position and reset the odometry and get the robot velocity from Swerve Drive, which was our, I think, yeah, our Swerve Drive up here. And, okay, what else does this do? After we get all of this, these configurations are going to be from our settings that we're going to set up in Path Planner. And, let's see. This makes the robot drive based on, um, with, uh, yeah, this just basically makes the robot drive when we have this enabled, which we do up here, which is true. Auto builder here is just a, another, is kind of what like sets up Path Planner or builds it. This is PID. So one thing I should know is that uh, if you want to make your autonomous like super duper precise, here's like the one of the PIDs on how you can do that although this is like after you tuned your other pid which is in your pid properties file and everything else this should be the last kind of the last step of the process 
You don't. You can keep this default for now, though. It should be fine. This just is trying to tell you which alliance you're on. This just catches the exceptions and handles it as needed. Awesome. And now, after we created our constructor for set up path planner, we're going to call it up here in our Swerve subsystem. So I'm going to put this right here. Set up path planner and semicolon. So now we called it in our Swerve subsystem. What is it in Griot? Oh, is it this bracket? Are you missing one or are you extra? You're missing. Okay. There we go. So now it's happy. And now we have our code in here. Awesome. Oh, so, okay, so now we need to set up our command to call our... Actually, no, let's set up Path Planner first. We're going to go to Path Planner, the application, and we are going to make a auto. This is going to be called New Auto, and we need to create a path for it. This is going to be the path that the robot travels. So you press the plus sign here, press Follow Path, and we're going to call this um, Example Path. And so, if you see here, it has, there's a little outline of basically what the path is, the robot's going to take. We can edit this path by pressing that pencil button, and this allows us to drag this point anywhere we want. And so, if you want your robot to go all the way out here, you can. Let's do that for now. And, yeah. There's a bunch more settings here, but we'll leave it to that for now. And so now you created your auto path, we're going to go basically configure our settings. So press the waffle, or not the, it's not a waffle, it's a hamburger. Then go to settings. And this here might look eerily familiar, as this is going to be the same as your configuration files from the video we made in part 1 for YAGSL. However, if you've noticed, this is on the metric system. So our wheel radius is so we can leave this here the mass you should probably change that if you want more precise simulations are uh, okay so we use neo motors okay our drive gear ratio was 12.8 our uh, wheel coat that was fine our drive current so this should eat so wheels, uh, the drive current limit is usually either 60 or 40 for motors. For Neos, it's going to be 40, although you're going to have to check if it's 60 or 40 for you. Uh, we use Neos though, so that's fine. Our wheel radius, our, so in YHSL they use diameter, which is 4. Radius is divide that by 2, so 2 inches, but in meters. So let's go find Google. 2 inches in meters, and that's going to be 0 0.5. Eight. Uh, where to go? Here. Okay. We um. Our module ups offsets is gonna be how many? Basically, the distance we did f for YHSL. So that should. Ours was twelve inches which is this and remember this is going to be exactly the same as your json files here so however front left it's going to be the same here but in inches so front left will both be positive front right will both be positive back left will both be negative just remember it's in meters what else do we have to change here i think that is done for now yeah Meters change ratio or change. Oh, your true drive speed. Make sure this is change. Ours. Uh, if we looked in our constants, we can find our max speed to be four point five. So I put it as four point five meters per second. And we're gonna close this for now. And that should be our auto created. So now we are going to go to our robot controller and make our autonomous command. So 
So this needs to return um, basically our pathfinder, right? So we're going to go back to our example code. We are going to go to robot. And we are going to robot container. Scroll all the way down to autonomous commands. And we want to return this right here. Get autonomous command new auto. Control C. Control V. Let's see. We need to make a... So this is mad because we haven't made a method called get autonomous command. We're going to quick fix this. And we're going to create a method in our Swerve subsystem. And it's going to be here. So now we're going to go right back to our uh, example code. We're going to go to robot, Swerve subsystem, down here. Scroll all the way down, control F, get a... Uh, autonomous command right here this is the exact same path name okay we're going to copy this control c paste this we're going to replace all of this command here paste it and now we have our get autonomous command method and this what it does is it creates a path using the auto builder from up there and that's basically running the path that we created in here okay now we have our autonomous command let's test out our code by running our simulation i'm gonna let this run you stay in the terminal tab and it built successful so we're gonna go to sim gui and click on our field run our autonomous and ta-da, pretty good. This next segment is gonna tell you how to run a command during your auto using Path Planner. And we are gonna go scroll up to our, actually I'm gonna delete this right here. We're gonna go to our robot container right here. And we are gonna type some code. So first thing I'm going to do is just mute our driver station. This will make sense later as we are going to print something as our command. Silence joystick. And we're going to make this true. So now that's silence. Let's go down here right behind below our drive base. We're going to make a named command. And we are going to register this command as test. It's called test. And we are in this command. What this command is going to do is it is going to print command dot print string message and let's say hello world a classic so that's going to be our command we are now go back to path planner go to our autonomous and right where our sequential group is we're going to add a plus sign and we're going to make a named command this named command is always going to be called test press enter and if you notice, this is going to be the exact same command that we called right here. Now we're calling it in Path Planner. And so when we go simulate our robot code, we're going to let this run. And what should happen is that when we run our autonomous, it's not only going to simulate the robot's path, to it's also going to print out the hello world inside our terminal. Let's see. We go here. We go to autonomous. It's moving. It stops. It's a little jittery because we haven't tuned our PID. But if we go to terminal, let's see how fast we can find Hello World. 
Hello World, right here, printed. And so that concludes our tutorial. We have learned how to program a simple autonomous using Path Planner and YHSL. And I gave you a little sneak peek on how to run an autonomous or run a command while also running uh, our path using Path Planner at the same time. And with that, you should make some. You're right, should able to be able to make some pretty basic autonomouses using our Swerve Drive. And yeah, I hope you like this tutorial and. If you have any questions, I would refer you to documentation such as uh, Path Planner's documentation as it's pretty useful for, you know, learning Path Planner. You can also go look at our YHSL documentation if you have any questions on that still, as well as going to WP Eyelid if you have any questions for... Um, what is it? Yeah, simulations and other advanced programming stuff. Alternatively, you could go email YHSL, or you could go email us in the description. But I'm going to end this tutorial. Hope you appreciate it, and happy swerving!